I have one of the world's coolest jobs. I track trends for a living, hundreds of trends. Here's what's interesting. In the last global recession, when the stock market lost $3.1 trillion, 80% of the trends we track kept growing, and all the ones I'm sharing with you today kept growing. We use trends to help organizations spot the next billion dollars of growth, but trends are relevant for everyone. I'm here to share a few insights in how you can use trends to stay ahead of the curve in a highly uncertain world. The first tip, some trends are a lot more predictable than others. The price of Alibaba stock in 2016, the price of oil in 2015, the price of gold any day. We call these items that are hard to predict dice rolls. What is fascinating to serious futurists is there's a whole other set of trends that are so predictable, you can set your watch by them. These are trends like the rise of the aging market, the rise of e-commerce, the rise of entertainment and celebrity, and the rise of Internet of Things, connecting objects to sensors to the internets. These are just four of the many trillion-dollar trends that we track. Even though these represent some of the largest opportunities on the planet, many organizations have not yet built these trends and their implications into their strategies. Take the market serving the growing population over 60. When this market was worth one trillion, it was called the gray market. When it went over four trillion, ka-ching, it was renamed the silver market. <laughs> Now, this isn't only about this growing population and how much of the wealth on the planet they control, it's also about organizations understanding the shifting needs of this trend. When companies think of this trend, they think of their parents and products their parents need. We tell them to think of Tina Turner, age 74, who headlined one of the top-selling concerts of her life six years ago. The future of this $4 trillion trend belongs to organizations that can unlock products that Tina and the rest of us will want, products that allow you to age in place, brain fitness, or that smart appliance that teams with you to keep your diet on track. Now, where the futurist work gets even more interesting is in spotting emerging billion-dollar trends. How do you know which trends are good bets today and which will be great five years from today? Take the rise of robotics. It's 25 billion today, it will be 67 billion in 2025. As prices come down and performance goes up, you'll see robots move to whole new applications, from mining bots to care bots to agricultural bots, over the next 10 years, expect to see robots move from making our cars to driving them. But there is a second emerging trend that gets a lot less attention than robotics. It's inside many of your houses and more than three times the size of the robotics trend. It's the $97 billion pet market. Okay, pets may not seem relevant for your company, but when Eli Lilly was looking for a new consumer segment for their anti-anxiety drug Prozac, imagine the creative marketing director who suggested they develop a chewable, liver-flavored version. Doesn't sound like a winning idea? Well, it turns out that our pets share our anxieties. The pet market for healthcare for dogs and pets is already 25 billion. The US, EU, and Japan all now have more pets than children. And last year, one of the largest IPOs wasn't a tech stock. It was Pfizer's animal medicine division. The trends that are relevant for each of you will differ. But in a world with lots of uncertainty, betting on more reliable trends is critical. Now, while the trends themselves are endlessly fascinating, 
What turns out to be equally important is what you do with the trends and when. Each trend has its own pace. This is the rise of the internet. I think of a megatrend like a surfer trying to catch a wave. There's the early period when the wave is hard to detect. It's far off. You need to be suited up and ready to go. But much of the energy is in tracking and waiting. Then, as the megatrend builds momentum, you have the opportunity to act, and you need to catch the wave. But less focused on is the fact that for many megatrends, there is a third period when it is often too late to lead. The trend can switch from being an opportunity to a risk, and companies that miss the wave, they can get caught in an endless catch-up cycle. Which for some companies can be fatal. Take Kodak. Kodak dominated the photography space for most of my lifetime. They also happened to have a patent on the world's first digital camera. Kodak saw the digital wave coming for certain. They discussed it at almost every board meeting, but they fundamentally misjudged its pace. Their Kodak moment ended in bankruptcy filing, January 2012. Spotting a trend isn't enough. You need to know the pace of a trend to act in the window of opportunity. What does a winner look like on the digital trend? Well, luckily there are many winners. They're all around us. But what surprised me when I started this job is just how many trends companies need to spot and lead on to win in today's world. Take Amazon. Everybody knows Amazon as an e-commerce winner. I think they have that position for sure. But did you know that Amazon is also leading in web and cloud services? And as of 2007, they're leading on the mobile device trend with the Kindle. Even when pursuing this trend, risk cannibalizing their existing sales. And now, Amazon is pioneering in robotic advantage. These are just four of the 14 major megatrends that Amazon has spotted and led to become the 35th largest company in the world in less than two decades. Amazon spots trends early. Has the courage to act and does so repeatedly. Now, trend tracking is an art and a science, and it does depend on access to good databases and using the latest tools. I'd like to share with you one of our more popular tools for spotting trends in that early phase. At first glance, this looks like the archipelago for your next vacation. But actually, it is a map of Starbucks' historic patent clusters. Patent maps are a fabulous way to understand where a company is investing, that give you clues of products that may materialize years in the future. This first island is Starbucks' patents in coffee and brewing. Here are their patents in packaging design, those all-important cups. Here's sandwich preparation. Here's loyalty cards and digital music. Patent maps are just one of the many powerful tools that we use to get advance notice of future moves and the waves that are forming. Now, so far, we've talked about the trends individually, but obviously, powerful opportunities are created where the trends combine. In the last decade, as a planet, we have crossed many inflection points. These are just three. As of 2005, we now have more people on the planet over 60 than under five. As of 2008, we now have more devices connected to the internet than people connected to the internet. And as of 2009, we have more people living in cities than not. We all know about many of these shifts, but how can you use this knowledge to build one of the world's greatest companies? Well, take the world of toys. In 2010, Lego was half the size of Mattel. 
in four short years, as of the first six months of this year, Lego is on track to be the largest toy company in the world. How did they do this? Well, first of all, Lego is the first toy company to build toys for kids of all ages. My husband has a very impressive set of Legos. And they took dumb plastic blocks and connected them to sensors, building some of the most popular robotic kits for kids and adults. And they took their farm kits and they added some of the most popular toys for them, which is a set of toys around cities and urban design. And as of earlier this year, Lego participated in the entertainment and celebrity trend, helping in a movie that grossed $500 million and proving that everything is awesome when you live at the confluence of multiple megatrends. We live in a world where foresight is increasingly critical. Too many companies aim to be market leaders in 2015, and not nearly enough are aiming to be market leaders in 2025. Foresight is a muscle that can be developed. So, if you want to stay ahead of the curve, first, get literate on the trends. Know your organization's trend hotspots and blind spots. Second, timing matters. Third, leverage tools to get advance notice of those waves. And fourth, everything is awesome at the confluence of multiple megatrends. And last, in today's world, there is no credit for spotting trends. Shaping the future belongs only to those with the courage to act. We need to become foresight masters to navigate the challenges and leverage the opportunities of the 21st century. Thank you.